So in this question, we are given a table with the number of coffees sold each day in a particular coffee shop. So in this table, two would represent two coffees were sold on that day. And our question is to make a frequency distribution table for this data and also to graph the, rel the relative frequency. So let's start off with a frequency table. So we would have coffee sold and we will have the frequency in which they were sold. So from our table, you can see that our lowest coffee sold on one day is zero and our highest sold on one day is eight. So on this axis, we will put zero to eight for the number of coffee sold. For our frequency axis, we want to count the number of times the shop sold zero coffees, one coffee, two coffees, and so on. So from our table, if you count up the number of zeros, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we have nine times that the shop sold zero coffees on that day. And for one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight times the coffee sold one coffee on that day. And if you keep counting them all up, you would get 4, 4, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. So if you add up all the frequencies, we actually have 31 data sets. And this is important to know for calculating the relative frequency in our next part of the question. So this is part A. For part B, we want the relative frequency. So I call it relative, this capital R, and frequency. So to find the relative frequency, we do 9 divided by 31, which will give us 0 0.29. Likewise, for the number 8, we do 8 divided by 31, gives us 0 0.26. And 4 divided by 31 gives us 0 0.13. The relative frequency is just a percentage of how many times the coffee was sold out of 31 data points. So in this case, we can say that zero coffees were sold with a frequency of 29% compared to the rest of the data set. So if we continue, this is also, also 0 0.13. 2 divided by 31 is 0 0.06. And 1 divided by 31 is 0 0.03. Uh, a good way to make sure that you didn't make any mistakes when calculating the relative frequency is that when you add them all up, it should equal 1. 1 in this case can also be thought of as 100%. So now when we want to graph the relative frequency against the number of coffees sold, we have a y axis and a horizontal axis. So this one is the relative dot frequency and this is the number of coffees sold. So like here, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, to all the way to 8. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. For our relative frequency, we can use any scale, but as you can see, the highest is 0 0.3. So I might just put the highest here as 0 0.3, and maybe this one as 0 0.15. So for 0, we have it all the way here. For 1, we have 0 0.26, which is around here. 2, we have 0 0.13, around here. Likewise for 3, 0 0.13. For 4, we have 0 0.06. And for 5, all the way to 8, we have 0 0.03, which would be around here, 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 here. So our relative frequency graph look like this. What you do is draw a vertical line so what we can say about our relative frequency diagram is that it is decreasing with the number of coffee sold and it's got a long right tail and also it's not, not symmetric we'll learn about why this is important in a later lesson but just for this tutorial you now know how to draw a frequency distribution table and a relative frequency graph.